it's very exposed when they like that, so he's looking for... Wow, I've never seen this before. Jerry and I was or am creator of Kampala Road which uh, has been a bit defunct for the last couple of years so I've been out of the railway scene for a couple of years to be honest with you I've had far too much going on um, like has all been affected by Covid problematic me being the goose I was trying to move continent and move country just at the beginning of the pandemic what timing do you call that but anyway, we get through it and um, positive things come out of it. So, but the family is still apart, unfortunately. My wife Jenny has just arrived in Australia after 14 months away. Um, kids missed about a year's school as I battled to get them into Australia. Unfortunately, uh, the government here allowed them in, just at the height of the travel restrictions. I went back to Uganda uh, a couple of months ago. That was the first time for over two years I was allowed to travel out of Australia and get back home. Due to traffic. Um, and while I've been in Australia, I've been doing my own passion, which is buying an old Land Rovers and four-wheel driving. Okay, so the scene has changed a lot. Um, and thank you for a couple of people in particular who have kept me abreast of what's going on in railway world. Um, and also, they were a great help during the darkest hours in June, July 2020 when this country was really cut off from the rest of the world and my family was in Uganda uh, and there was no sort of, nobody knew what was happening, what was going on, how long it would last uh, and I was living in Adelaide actually which is a foreign town to me. I was very very lucky that we have a home in Uganda where the family could stay and I was very lucky I had a house in Brisbane which is where I am now where I could drive up to and um, camp out, basically, um, while we were waiting to see what happens. Um, but A.D. Pullen, thank you, mate. You've kept me in touch with what's going on. And Richard Swallow in um, Perth, Western Australia. Um, he was important checks or soundboard for me during those months, and I really appreciate it. So thanks, guys. So the scene has changed dramatically um, in the model railway scene. Um, some YouTubers have been taken on by the big companies, I notice. Um, some of the big retailers have had their wings clipped, <laughs> which was coming, I think. Um, which is good for the smaller guys, I, to give them a chance to crack on and, and you know, offer a service which maybe the box shifters weren't. And those box shifters have had to reinvent themselves. Um, Rails was uh, ditched by Hornby, um, Backman ditched Hattons, all sorts of things changed. Very interesting to see how the dynamics have changed and you've got the other guys who have grown in stature. So I think it's good for the business, um, personal opinion. Uh, another personal opinion is uh, I think Hornby are a bit of a bully at the moment and jumping in and trying to smother the opposition. Fortunately it hasn't worked and I'm very very grateful for that. And we're seeing some great models coming out of the smaller guys. And I think if Hornby aren't careful, the smaller guys will get bigger guys, become bigger guys. So yeah, interesting times, personal opinion. The next week of footage is about my trip back to Uganda, which was the first time I've been home, inverted commas, for uh, over two years. We weren't allowed to travel out of Australia until February this year. And um, I took the boys across to see Mum um, in end of March. End of March. We stayed there a month. So you'll see me unload the, uh, unpack my layout, look at the possibly new railway room, 
some ideas, timing. Um, very difficult at the moment because, as I explained, I've got one foot here in Australia, one foot in Uganda, and some decisions have got to be made. Um, but I have been purchasing stock. Um, I've got some ideas for videos coming up, which are slightly different from what everybody else posts. So uh, that's because we're in, I'm in a unique position where I buy from overseas and I live in different countries, etc. So different perspective. But ultimately, um, it's for the subscribers and people who have supported me um, over the last couple of years. I've had more subscribers subscribe since I've not posted a video than when I have posted a video. Maybe there's a message in that. Anyway, uh, enjoy the footage. I'll meet you at the end of the video. Cheers. This is the original railway room. Anybody familiar with my videos may recognise it. That's my layout, packed up over two years ago. And as I said earlier, I just cannot remember a lot of it. So I'm here to catalogue. That's a cupboard which is in the way. <laughs> there is an uh, alcove there if you like. Very echoey in here. It's a four meter wall. And there are a couple of challenges with this room. So why this room is better and will offer a lot more scope, there are a couple of challenges. One is it has a balcony, which means there is a door which opens inwards towards the room. So there's going to have to be a drawbridge arrangement there, or something, a slide out section. Then, on the same wall, there is an ensuite bathroom. Every room has an ensuite bathroom, that's how they build houses here. So there's another challenge on the corner. Again, another drawbridge or slide out section. And then, of course, the entrance. And what I'm planning there is not another drawbridge, but the layout will come across here. So I have access to those covers and a door. What did I bring back with me? Um, I took a lot of locos to Australia a couple of years ago. It's over two years ago now. Uh, 40. And I brought some back. I also took my Z21 back with me. That's here. I've completely forgotten how to use it. I just have given the railway no thought at all since I've been away. And I have utterly forgotten how to use that. So that's a sort of learning curve. Um, I don't even know if I've got the railway software on the app anymore because I've changed phones since then. I brought things like this back. This was the real workhorse of the steam locos on my old layout. I've actually invested in one of these, which I'm really pleased about because I intend to have one line on the new layout as a DC only analog or switchable. I bought a lot of coaches. I've been investing in coaches in the last six months because the coaches are really, I've got a bit of a fetish if that's the right word about coaches. These are the Hawksworths, they are gorgeous. Love coaches, and I'm going to do another video on those separately. Oh, what have I got here? Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know why I brought that back. That should be in the bin. Got this, never run it. I've got so much I've never run. I'm just embarrassed. A few TTS sound chips there, what have we got here? 50. Britannia, that will go into my clan, which I bought. 9F. 
A1, A3, don't know what it is. Class 31, class 66. I bought that, what, three years ago to go in the 59 from Depot, which still isn't here. <laughs> and then HST. My weathering expertise. Oh, yeah, I've forgotten I had these. Completely forgotten I had a, what's that? Virgin? Virgin. HST set. Not that I ever use it. Not my time. I think I bought it on price. I think you could get the HST set, two power cars for 80 or 90 pounds. I, Rails of Sheffield were clearing them out. Of my unpacking, and it's laborious, but that's my whinging for the day. Right, so I found a few gems. There is in the wooden box three A4 locomotives, Commonwealth Australia. They are split chassis, which is one of the reasons why I want a normal DC line on my new layout. But I have found some others. Let's have a look up here, see if I can zoom in. The light is not good. I had completely forgotten I had this. Brighton Bell. What I'm doing with that, I don't know. One of the uh, outcomes of my unpacking frenzy is my decision-making process when buying things was questionable. <laughs> there was a lot of stuff I didn't realise I had, and then thinking, why on earth did I buy it? But that's really what I'm here for. These are some of the coaches, and that's really why I did this exercise. To have. I was really interested in coaches. As I mentioned yesterday, I love coaches, and I really want to see what I had, because the new layout will be bigger. And on the old layout, I used to run four coaches, five, six is an absolute maximum. With a larger layout, obviously I want to run more lengthy trains, I'm not going to say prototypical or realistic because I don't believe in that, but more lengthy trains. Um, I'm trying to work out what I've got, so I've had some surprises. The um, ones I was most concerned about was the BR Grey, Blue Grey, and these are the Mark 1s here, and these are the Mark 2As, I believe. Is that right? I'm not too good. Mark 2As, yeah, they're the Backman ones. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six Mark two, sorry, Mark ones, of which one is a restaurant car and one is the buffet, which join together. So only four coaches are for passengers. So six, I think seven or eight is probably the more um, reasonable size. So I'm missing two. That's what I'm looking at, for example. Here I've got one, two, three, four, five Mark II A's, um, but no buffet car in there, so I need a Mark I buffet car. I always run my trains with buffet cars, that's a childhood memory. So here, this is my Mark III's for the HST, and I have, this is in BR Blue Grey, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they generally ran as well, seven, eight or nines, I do want to run two buffet cars on my HST. I remember seeing it as a child and I've seen it on video since, so I know it existed. Okay, so I've lost my glasses, so I can't really see. Um, to underline my dodgy buying decisions, I found these. What have we got here? Thousand gems. Birdcage coach. I mean, what am I doing with those? The set of three. I haven't even opened them. They're in the tissue. I, I don't know why. What I'm doing with those? Weak moment. Oh, this is a little gem. This is the inspection saloon in BR Blue Grey. That has appeared on my layout and on some video. Through. So I went to. I knew a model shop existed near Bolton Abbey. But I have been thinking about switching to electro frog points. But those 
are all my points and double slips and express points and blah 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 y points or whatever um, 700 pounds to replace all those with electro frog they're all insole frog I'm not going to do that this, brought, this box brought back memories from childhood um, I spent a lot of time I found these very cheap I love them they're the Lima hopper wagons and I weathered them oops sorry and put loads in them But this is classic for me. I notice they go very quickly when they're on sale. I put loads in them. I've got eight of them. I bought them at a second hand shop in Otley in Yorkshire a few years ago. Bring back memories because I bought the 1977 Silver Jubilee freight set when I was a kid. Put it on, I bought it on finance or HP as they called it back then. And when you bought it, they gave me a free one of these. There you go. The cab is quite detailed, given the model is 2000s. Beautiful. So all ready to be DCC. She's got tender pickups, so she'll be a good runner. That was a good buy. Another little gem I have found is this D49 Hunt class. This is Burton, railroad range, brilliant. Has uh, tender pickups, picks up on these four wheels here. I remember it, it's a lovely loco to watch with three or four uh, coaches behind it. Whizzes around, does have traction tyres unfortunately, but I think it was sub 50 pounds when I bought it. It was fantastic. It is a fantastic loco. Love it. Very interesting this unpacking lark. Um, I'd genuinely forgotten I had some stock and quite embarrassed about it. J94. I had completely forgotten I had one of those. I do remember getting it and I remember, God, it's too hard to DCC because um, you've got to do some modification inside. But if I have a DC analog line, I will very much look forward to running that. It's a beautiful saddle tank loco. My dad's favourite was saddle tank loco. Um, I've just been looking at a couple of uh, Duchess, the old Duchess from the 2000s. They're better than the new ones, I can tell you. Not much difference, but they're better. Um, continuing my coach fetish, these beautiful Pullmans with the lights on the table, etc. I mean, they're, I don't know, what, 10, 15 years old now. They are a thing of beauty, I think. Absolutely. Five of them, plus a dining car to go in, so a reasonable rake. Anybody can tell me what loco is it? Is, is it uh, Southern Region Locos or did uh, Eleni Airport? I don't know. Two locos I didn't know I had, I genuinely didn't know. <laughs> Sounds terrible. Backman NSE Class 47. I only thought I had the Helgen one. And Backman BR Green weathered class 47. Fantastic. I'm looking so forward to running these. Again, my buying decision making in question.
Uh, so where am I going with all this once I've uh, unpacked everything? Well, I honestly don't know. Um, I've got one foot in Uganda, one foot in Australia. Um, it's a decision we've got to make over the next few months where we end up. Uh, it's, it's been difficult, it's been a tough two years, but everybody's been in the same boat, I'm aware of that. Um, the grand plan was to move to Australia, that's been whittled away and washed away a little bit by what's going on. Work-wise, don't know, have to see. Our business here in this country is going very well. Um, we don't want to give that up, obviously. I think if you've got something good going in business or work, you shouldn't be giving it up at the moment. <laughs> uh, so there are plans for a new layout. It's coming along. Uh, it'll be a slow burn project. I think realistically, nothing will start till next year, early next year. I plan to be back here at Christmas. Um, by which time we'll have made a decision where we're living. I have found another box unopened. So I've now got three un unboxings to do, which I'll do while I'm here in Uganda. I have no idea what's in here. It doesn't feel like anything interesting. I've got no idea what it is. It's from Rails. Um, so I found some interesting things. Uh, I've got my new um, Backman 47, the all singing, all dancing one. Very expensive, and I've got that in the same livery as Firefly, which was in the Intercity Swallow. I put them together, they don't look that much different. Um, I hope the performance is different. Uh, I found some interesting low cars. I never knew I had an, an 8F. And I've also called into question my purchasing prowess. I think uh, looking at um, probably being here alone by myself doing it without too much communication, I was being sucked into crazes and fads back between 2016 and when I left here, early 2020, buying the wrong things, buying it on price or buying it because everybody else was rushing into it, rather than actually buying what I want uh, and what I want to run. And I've just done that again recently, believe it or not, um, and I'll take you to Australia to show you what I bought. So back in Oz, this is what I bought. Stunned silence. Not sure why I did it. So this is the item I bought and I feel probably got caught in the wave of hysteria in buying it. £400 plus, seven car set. Um, it landed here in Australia for just under £390 I think. Um, thanks to Kerno Models who were very good. They got me out of the uh, dire straits I was in because I was desperate for this. Don't know why, but I was. The reason I say I was desperate for this was I pre-ordered this with Rails and um, when Rails were excommunicated by Hornby they didn't tell me that my pre-order was cancelled and it was only another YouTuber who contacted me months later who advised me of this and I was really out of the railway scene uh, at that time back in late 2020 I think it was um, and I contacted Kerno and they said yes they could they could um, find one for me so that was good but bad because I've looked at it it's very plasticky three uh, decoders required and it really didn't run on the railways anyway did it so not sure okay so that's me for the moment there's a couple more videos coming up um, one is the unboxing of those three boxes in Uganda um, which I found which obviously arrived just after I left one of which I didn't know what was in and quite exciting discovery two I did um, and then we'll carry on from there so um, thanks for if you made it this far thanks very much for watching and see you soon cheers guys